Are you looking for an easy to build rocket? That's what I'm going to show you in this episode of the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. I'm going to show you how to build the Blue Streak rocket. It's one of our most simplest to build rockets. Um, the reason I like it, other than it's simple, is it also can be very versatile. You can use a streamer with it or a parachute, and you can even use it, use it in a competition, um, either parachute duration or streamer duration. It's a very versatile rocket. It flies really high because it's very small. Even on an AA3 engine, this rocket will go about 475 feet in the air. If you put a C engine in it, it's going to go 1,400 feet in the air. It's going to be so small in the sky, you're going to have a hard time seeing it. So I would recommend using it with small engines. Uh, when you first get the kit, uh, it's, it's bagged like this, and I always like to pull out the instructions first to kind of get a uh, gauge on how hard the rocket is to build, and I'll follow along in the instructions. Um, so let me open those up, put them over here. Um, our first step is to find the centering rings, and you pour everything out, and you have a big tube and a small tube. Now, this is a uh, motor mount for using the Estes mini engines. You don't have to build it, and it's one of the options in the kit. Um, you don't have to install it. You can actually make it removable so you can fly with um, big engines or little engines. So here is the regular size engine, and here is the mini size engine. So if you want to fly with the mini engines, you will build this engine mount. Uh, we're going to do it both ways, just like the instructions. Um, so um, you're going to take one of the blue centering rings like that and our shock cord, and this is Kevlar, and just get rid of the little tape. Um, we're going to attach this blue centering ring to the, uh, the shock cord to the blue centering ring, but we need to cut a notch. Now this is one of the hardest steps in the whole process. Um, if you're working with little kids, um, you might want to do this one yourself, wear your safety glasses because you're going to use the hobby knife. Um, and you need to cut a notch on the outside of the ring. Um, and I don't go straight in. I always go at a little bit of an angle because I'm going to make a V notch. So there's one side and then I go the other side and be very careful here. See, I'm using like a little sawing action. All right, so I took out a little sliver of the outside of the ring and I want to tie the shock cord to that ring. I'm going to make a double knot. Okay, and then I want to put it inside of the little notch that I just created. I also like to take a little bit of glue and I like to put it on the knot so that that knot can never ever come undone. Um, because if, if it comes undone, then um, our shock cord and our, is going to come apart and the nose cone is going to drift away. Okay, so I put a little glue on there. Um, and our second step is to smear glue 2.25 inches into the body tube, and that's this big body tube. Um, you're going to need a, a, a spent rocket motor, and I always save my spent rocket motors because for this very reason, it allows you to push in centering rings. So I'm going to measure on the rocket engine two and a quarter inches right there. Okay. And that is how far I'm going to push the ring in. So when I push the ring in, I'm going to stop right there. Okay, and then I need to um, also put uh, glue um, inside the tube. So I take a dowel, and I'm using the back end of a paintbrush here. 
And you see I'm, I'm always rotating it because the glue wants to sag and then one, it's going to drip. So if you keep rotating then the glue drop never drips. And I want to go in two and a quarter inches. So about right there. So I go in and just smear it around. So I'm rotating the tube and rotating the brush. Got all the glue off of it. Okay, now this is the tricky step. I need to thread the shock cord down into the tube, past the glue, and out the bottom. And it wants to grab the glue, which is not what I want. Okay, see that? I got it through. Okay, now I want to make sure that the shock cord stays in that notch. I'm going to push that in there, and then I'm going to take my rocket engine and just slide it in. I want to do this in one push. Okay, so now I got it in at the right spot, and we're going to let that dry. Because um, if you tug on that shock cord right now, you're going to move that ring, and that's not what we want. So let that glue dry. And so that is why we go to the third step. I'm going to allow that glue to dry while I start working on my fins. So we're going to take our fin sheet, and this is a die cut fin sheet. Uh, in the future we're going to laser cut these um, for the reason of our die cutter is no longer in business. Um, because that's what happens with when new technology comes along. It puts old businesses out of business. Um, so I'm going to sand this lightly. Um, and I'm using 220 grit sandpaper here, so this is a nice fine grit sandpaper. And do both sides. And that makes the surface nice and smooth. And then I'm going to get the fins out of... Sometimes they'll just pop right out, like this one here wants to pop right out. You'll just take your hobby knife and just go around the perimeter and you'll feel them pop out. And I don't need this part here. That was for an old kit that we used to sell. And let's see, what was it? It was called the Hydra. One of our old kits from in the uh, mid 1990s. I don't need that. Okay, and I want to stack sand these. And what the purpose of stack sanding is, is to make sure that all the fins are exactly the same size. So I, I, I line them up, and I usually align the, the root edge, the part that's going to glue right to the tube. That's the root edge. And I'll sand, I'll squeeze really tight start sanding. Okay, now don't let go, just kind of pivot the fin. Keep squeezing because you don't want them moving, because otherwise you have to start all over. Okay, so now they're all the same size. Okay, so now this is called the root edge, and that's the part that's going to get glued to the tube. So the part away from the root edge is called the tip edge. So this is the tip edge. The, the, the direction of the rocket is going to be up this way. So this is the leading edge. It leads into the flight, and then this one is called the trailing edge. So I'm going to sand. I'm going to round off the leading edge and the trailing edge, because this will make the rocket go even higher, because it reduces the drag. So you can see I'm just kind of rounding it off, just like that. And you can
can see it best by looking at the edge. You can see now it's, it's curved here and it's curved here. And we'll do that to all three fins. So while I'm doing this, um, over here off to the side are some other videos I think that you're going to enjoy. When we come back the next time, we'll start gluing these fins onto the body tube. So my name is Tim Van Milligan. You're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.